Hey folks, Todd Starooch, the horror nerd here again at the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival. And I am sitting here with director Jeff Burr. Such films as Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Stepfather 2. Um, Jeff, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How about you? I am doing great. It's been a long day. You're getting a little tired. We had some weather, but uh, having a lot of fun. How about you? Yeah, the weather was, uh, it was amazing to watch. I'm from Georgia. We don't get that kind of weather very often, especially in March so it was a uh, seeing snow and rain it was beautiful and when you do it causes Georgia to come to a complete standstill <laughs> you would be horrified to know yeah how little snow it causes to close the schools in uh, Dalton yeah exactly so um uh, how first of all how has the day at the convention here been for you oh wonderful I, I got reunited with some old friends and people I worked with like Tony Hudson and Kate Hodge I hadn't seen them in many years and uh, uh, PJ Souls, who I did a movie with uh, years ago, and she's she, always wonderful to see. And just the scope of the event, I, I had no idea. So, so this this is, is new to me, uh, and this just the scope of the convention is, is, is incredibly impressive. It's just neat, it's neat. And there, I mean, a million people I want to meet here too. That you know, I got two more days to do it. You know, it's awesome when you're also a fan, you know? <laughs> absolutely. I would say almost every director is, is at heart a film fan, and, and, and absolutely. And that, that, that times 10 with me, especially with horror films. Absolutely. So what I what I really am curious about is, so you directed uh, one of the uh, entries in probably one of the most well-known horror film franchises of all time. How did that even come about? How did you come to direct uh, Leatherface? Well, I, actually, I came uh, in a very, very traditional way in the, in the 80s in, in Hollywood. Uh, I had an agent, and I got a call from the agent saying, hey, do you want to meet on uh, a movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next sequel, because um, they're looking, New Line is looking for a director. So I go, yeah, sure. And uh, so they, they sent me the script, and they, you know, they'd seen my other movies, and I came in for a meeting, and uh, it went how it went thought it was okay and, and whatever but didn't hear anything and then basically when, once you don't hear something for a month or three weeks you figure okay they made their decision I didn't get it okay so uh, turns out they had hired another director and for whatever reason he had to drop out so I got a my agent got a phone call from New Line basically saying is Jeff Burr still interested in directing Leatherface so she called me and we kind of talked about it and weighing the pros and cons, and there were a lot of cons, quite honestly. Um, and I said, "Yeah, what the hell? Let's do it." And because I figured, okay, it's going to be a big theatrical release, New Line Cinema, maybe we can have a home there and do other movies there. And um, and it was a very quick turnaround in, in the sense that I got hired in July. The movie was supposed to come out in November, mm. so very quick turnaround, especially in the pre-digital editing days. So anyway, so that's how I got it. I mean, and, and um, so so unfortunately, I thought, not knowing the backstory, I thought, okay, well, New Line must really want me to direct this movie. Therefore, they must be interested in my ideas. Therefore, they must appreciate my creativity. So you can see how naive I was uh, when I got this job. So 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 anyway, it, it was really kind of just a battle, not a battle, but just a a bad match of director and production unit. And, and that doesn't mean I'm right and they're wrong. It just means it was just a bad match, a bad marriage. Hmm. Interesting. And they tried to divorce me several times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very interesting story. Um, does it ever surprise you um, that after all these years, uh, how passionate we horror fans still are about some of these movies after such a long time? It, it does not surprise me, but it makes me incredibly grateful. Uh, that that some of my movies are, you know, I mean, I do can sound like a ninety year old man, but but some of my movies are remembered and 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 and, and dare I say cherished uh, a few of them. So so that knowing that and knowing that maybe not to get philosophical, but but maybe these movies will outlive you and they'll be around as a cultural, uh, you know, some kind of cultural recognition um, to show where we were as a culture. Um, they, they, they may be around, you know, as long as there's, you know, disc to play them or film projectors to project them. So um, that's gratifying to me, and I'm grateful that that uh, that some people have responded to these movies the way they have. 
fantastic. I'm just speaking just for myself. I'm just a fan like anybody at heart. And I, after all this time, I still enjoy them, you know? So it's it's no, great. And the thing is, I, I enjoy many movies that I grew up with. Uh, I always say films can be like childhood toys, where if you see them at the right age, you will never forget them. You know, regardless of if they're good or bad, whatever. Um, because, because like every child has got a certain toy that he remembers from childhood and remembers everything about it, even if it's a you know, a ten cent army man, whatever. Uh, and the same with films. I think if you see certain films at a certain age, in your or a certain period in your life, you will connect somehow with some of them, and they will you will connect in such a way where it's it's a lifelong connection, you know, mentally speaking. So so that's a. That's an important thing to, to realize when you're making a movie. Because, like, we used to say that, okay, it's, it's history. Film is history when we're shooting a film. And, like, okay, you finish a take, oh, that's history. Because you know you've captured it, and it's there forever. And with digital, you don't necessarily think that, because everything is so easy, temporary, and uh, it's a, so, so it's a whole different mindset, I think, with with. Not necessarily with filmmakers, but with the film watchers, you know? It's funny you mention that about digital, because you're right, in a way, it seems very transient, because it's yeah. not a physical medium, but yet, once it's out there now, you put it, say, on the, it's, now it's, it's there forever. It'll, it'll show up somewhere, yes. Yeah, okay. I always say, uh, if you capture an image, Make sure. I mean, make sure you realize somebody will let it go. <laughs> oh, believe me, I am well aware I can never run for U.S. Senate at this point. Yeah, just, yeah. Me too. On that. Um, out of all your many projects, do you have a personal favorite? Well, okay. Here's the thing. Uh, just probably just like a first love, uh, my first film is forever ingrained within me, and and I, I can I remember everything about it. And I'm pretty good memory about all of these movies, but, but, but it's just uh, that first film. So, is that my favorite? Uh, is, is that the film that, that you would put in a time capsule necessarily? Well, I don't know. But that that is the closest, I won't say close to my heart, the closest definitely of melding heart, mind, and uh, physical. I, I just remember everything about it, partly because, in a great deal, because uh, I, I shot it in my hometown. Mm. So, it was a... Uh, and, and also it was a culmination of a dream, but also a culmination of, um, uh, of something that, that I really thought. It was like a, a prophecy, if you will. You know, I thought, I'm going to make a feature film. So, uh, but, and my brother was incredibly instrumental in making it with, uh, with a guy named Darren Scott. And they, basically, they helped make my dream come true. And in, in, in doing that, it made some of their dreams come true. So, so it was a very special movie in the making of it and in, in the in the friendships forged and all that that's great that's great um all right what are you working on these days you have any film projects you're working on currently i do have a, a couple film projects but I, I have a script that i'm finishing writing now that i hope to make in the summer a small budget digital movie um that uh will, will show a different side i think i hope it's just one of the, it's, it's one of the i haven't made a movie a feature film in about six years so this this one is bubbling up inside me, and I, I, it's one of those, for better or worse, I have to get out and get on screen. So, Very cool. Is Can you tell us the name, or? I, I, it's, it's got a couple titles, um, but I don't want to give the titles away. But it, okay, it, it, fair enough. It's primarily a uh, comedy. So, so Okay, cool. All right. All right, so Jeff, um, why don't you tell the viewers how they can follow you along and stay up with news on, on that project? Okay, you can uh, you go to my website. Uh, it's been under construction forever, but it's about to be finished. So, like, let's say April of 2018, it'll be up. If it's already up as a whole holding thing, www.jeffburr.com. Very easy to remember. And, uh, and, and you can email me at uh, jeffcburr at aol.com. And uh, I love hearing from anybody, and uh, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to hear from, you don't have to love the films. If you have questions about them, that's good, too, because it's it just talking about the stuff that's such a big part of your life, and, and every film becomes a big part of your life. Talking about that is nothing, nothing less than, than amusing and fun, and, uh, and I'll, I always learn something from it, too. Fantastic. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for oh, taking a few minutes to spend with us. It was great speaking with you. 
uh, Jeff Burr, everybody, and we will see you all in the next interview.